Welcome to Hope Natural Health, the podcast inspiring you to be your best version. Join me, your host, Dr. Erin, naturopathic doctor, dog mom, cancer survivor, and girl boss weekly as we discuss all things health, hormones, and happiness with a little side of this thing called life. Welcome back to the Hope Natural Health Podcast, where I try to get you healthy the right way. Last week, we talked all about what happens to your brain if you don't eat enough. And this week, we're completely switching tunes and talking about intimacy. And I have a special guest here, Susan Bratton, who is the intimacy expert to millions. She's a champion and advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion their whole life long. Who doesn't want more intimacy? She's a co-founder and CEO of two different corporations, Personal Life Media, a publisher of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills, and The 20, which is a manufacturer of organic and botanical supplements that enhance sexual vitality. She's a best-selling author and publisher of 34 books and programs, including Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him. Oh my gosh, these titles are amazing. Hot to Trot. I love it. She's been featured in the New York Times and on CNBC and the Today Show, as well as frequent appearances on literally almost every network. You can find her show at betterlover.com and we will have all of her links to everything in the show notes. So I'm so excited she's here. Welcome to the show, Susan. Hi, Dr. Aaron. Hey, thank you so much for having me. You know, it was funny when you said, um, uh, and who doesn't want more intimacy? Mm-hmm. And I thought, actually, quite a few people don't want more intimacy because they don't feel well. Ah. A sure sign that you're in good health is that you said that. And who doesn't want more intimacy? Yes. But um, there are so many people working on their health. You know, you wanted to talk about libido, desire, and arousal. I make distinctions about those three. And I said I'd really like to start off today with the distinctions about those three because a lot of people kind of conflate them. Um, You know, my libido and my desire are one and the same thing. And, And they're actually, if you break it down, really three distinct areas. I like to think about them as a Venn diagram, one of those three circles that intersect, you know, kind of like the Olympic uh, logo. Yes. It's maybe the Olympic logo of sexuality Ah. and intimacy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just in a nutshell, libido is how your body is feeling. It's the lustiness, the desire, the horniness. I think horniness is probably the best term for it because horniness connotes that body-based wanting to have sex. And your libido and your health are two sides of the same coin. They, it's how as healthy as you are, your libido is high. As unhealthy as you are, your libido is low. They are directly correlated. Mm-hmm. And then desire is how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your partner, if you're lucky enough to have one. Um, when you don't feel good about yourself, when you have body image issues, mm-hmm. you've gained weight, whatever, um, it's shocking to me how much self-loathing there is out there. Um, yep. And and deservedness and shame and religious repression. And so you can think about desire is almost being the emotional piece because it's not only how you feel about yourself and your sexuality, but it's also about how you feel about your partner if you're lucky enough to have one. <laughs> and I keep saying that because there are so many people in relationships who aren't having sex and all the single people are looking at them all the healthy single people are looking at them like what is your problem do the work get connected figure it out i recently talked to a girlfriend of mine she wanted to go out to lunch and she confided in me and i thought i thought she was going to tell me that her husband was having an affair (laughs) Because I saw him recently and he looked good. Like he looked, you know how some guys get better looking as they get older? Oh, yeah. He looked good. I was like, (laughs) "Mm, mm, mm, boy, my girlfriend's got a hottie husband. 
And she said, he doesn't want to have sex with me. We never have sex. I'm thinking about doing something else kind of outside of the marriage. And I've, I have this idea I want to run by you about maybe how I could make it work. And yet he's confided in me that she doesn't want to have sex with them. So they're literally at a standoff. Like you said, who doesn't want intimacy? Most people do want it, even if it's just theoretical, if they don't feel well enough. Right. Um, and, and so there's just a lot of loss of communication and a, and a lot of people who think sex equals penetration intercourse and intercourse is this giant ask, this big thing that women aren't always ready for, which I want to talk about when we get into that matriarchal and patriarchal conversation yeah. about sexuality, which I, I told you I'd like to talk about. But um, that's desire. And then arousal is having enough time for your body to get turned on. Because often as women, we are with male bodied partners, penis owners, I like to call them. <laughs> and they are so lucky. They have all they have they have competitive sexual advantages to women. Number one, they get a bath of testosterone every day. As you know, they've got more testosterone than we do. We are a testosterone replacement really helps us women. Number two, they get erections much faster than we do. We have as much erectile tissue in our vulva as our men do in their penises, but they've got the benefit of hemodynamics that mm -hmm. work much more quickly. They have fast acting blood flow. We have slow flowing. Mm -hmm. blood flow. That's really the second thing. And the third thing is that intercourse, which some people consider to be sex, I think it's a part of sex. And I think it's the most important part of sex. A lot of what I do is I teach orgasm and intercourse techniques for heterosexual monogamous couples, because people think they know how to have intercourse. Mm -hmm. And they do not men are men are having sex with us like we're porn stars or they think we are like because they've got mis they've gotten misinformed by their porn habits which i think have really hurt us over the last few decades and so they're ready to go and we're not and they think we're broken and yep. we think we're broken and we're not broken at all we, we our operating system is different yes. and so i teach men and women how to get into her world to have what i call the matriarchal view of sex so that we can get aroused in the way we need it so we love to have sex and we love to have intercourse because we learn how to have orgasms from intercourse. We cross that gasm chasm. We close gasm, that gasm. orgasm gap. That's the difference between how easy it is for men and how difficult it is for women. Yeah. So that's really that that libido desire and arousal, which frankly we don't we're not all there and I wish we were because <laughs> it's so fulfilling good sex and connection. Absolutely. And that's really a great way to start this off because it's true. It's I mean my favorite part that you pointed out is that we're different. And we can't yeah. get to that, you know, just like exactly what you said. And we put that blame on ourselves as women. Do, like, do. oh, my God, and our why men can't do. they think we're broken? Yeah. Or why can't you get into this? And it's like, uh, right. give me a minute. <laughs> right, we exactly. had a you skipped a skate. You skipped a yeah. step. So let's dive into that matriarchal yeah. and patriarchal conversation. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. OK, <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> thank you, Erin. <laughs> well, I would say um, a man is horny every day. He's biologically wired to masturbate on a nearly, if not multiple time a day basis, which is why men rely on porn to do that. And and um, that's because they need to get they, they have to have their semen kind of topped up and fresh. Biologically, they're wired to do that because you, they never know when we're going to want it because we're on a 28 day cycle. Yep. Even after menopause, we're women who run with the moon. And so because they're always ready to go. They're already aroused. They're already turned on. And we're not. Sex is very rushed. I call the kind of sex that most men give women, squeeze a boob and stick it in. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you've had that kind of sex with men. I think <laughs> everyone all, has. We all have. Yeah. And it, when there's new relationship energy and you're young and you're, you know, more lubricated and all these things, 
that you can get by on that for a while. But in long term monogamous relationships, which frankly, everybody's in, I mean, it's the 80 20 rule. I speak to the bell curve. I speak to all the people that are in the big middle of the bell, which is I'm married. I have a husband. He's always horny. He asks me for sex. I'm not ready. I say no. I avoid him. He feels rejected. He emotionally checks out. He gets pissed. Our, we, he stops touching me. I, he, he starts snoring. <laughs> I send him to the other room. We, I'm lonely. He's cranky. His testosterone drops. He stops bugging me for sex. But now he's a grumpy old man. Where the hell did my sex life go? How familiar does that sound? I think you're speaking to almost everyone out there. That's the story. Unless they've worked with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I do say that um, I'm not a therapist. Uh, no, I don't work with people one-on-one. -on -one. What I do and have been doing for two decades is publishing passionate lovemaking techniques. I teach people how to transform having sex, which I consider to be procreation, slot A into tab B. We've all figured that out. I teach people how to transform having sex into making love. I teach lovemaking love skills. It. I teach heart-connected, passionate lovemaking skills, bedroom communication skills, how to know what you want, how to know what's possible. Like one of the things that I recently created is something I call my sex life bucket list. I'd love for you to take it. Erin, okay. are you married? And technically, no, but I'm in a relationship of five and a half years, so... Okay, so you're in a long-term yes. committed relationship. So this works great whether you're a single or a married person or in a long-term relationship with or without a partner. It doesn't really matter. But the sex life bucket list is, it's at sexlifebucketlist.com. You can put that in your show notes. It's okay. pretty easy to remember. Yeah. I, keep, I try to keep it simple, sex life bucket list. Um, you go there and I give you a downloadable PDF. And the downloadable PDF, and this gets to the matriarchal versus patriarchal thing that I'm, I'm, I'm coming right at you with <laughs> <Okay>. this. Um, <laughs> have no fear. <laughs> um, it, it gives you 48 ideas for things you can do together in the bedroom. Because what I found is that men really do want to give us what we want. They just don't know what it is. Yeah. And they will give up their pleasure for our pleasure. So I, I have zero disrespect, 110% res respect for men and their desire to please us as partners. But they don't know what we want. And a lot of times we don't feel like we even know what we want. And that's what I do is I, I, I give you ideas for how to have really fun, hot sex experiences. Because your sexual growth is the other side of the same coin of your personal growth. It's you get better at having sex your whole life long if you put your attention on it and you have the intention to improve your sex life by learning new things because sex is a series of learned skills, learning how to have all the different 20 kinds of orgasms our bodies are capable of, learning how to have different techniques, using toys and tools, trying new things like role play. You know, there's all of these different things. And so what people really like from Susan Bratton are ideas. Tell me what to do, what's possible for me. Because we don't learn these things in school. We don't learn them in church. We don't learn them anywhere. So I do that. So my one-on-one -on -one isn't like that. My one-on-one -on -one is here's a downloadable PDF with 48 sexy bedroom ideas. Go through it, write an A, B, or C beside each one. A is, oh, this is definitely going on my bucket list. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> B is, you know, it's not going to go on my bucket list, but if my partner wanted to do it, I'm totally down. Cool. C is, it's not right for me right now mm. because as you mature, the thing you used to think, I mm. remember I used to not understand what spanking was. And I thought, oh, my goodness, why would anyone want to have a spanking during sex? That seems so violent. Right. And then I realized, oh, it's just kind of more like a little bun warm up. It's kind of a cute little thing. It's fun to do. It feels good. It kind of gets you turned on. It's a little dirty. And it went on my list and I learned how to do it. And it's fun. So 
not for me right now is your C's. And then you take your A-list rank order, prioritize it. He takes his A-list rank order, prioritize it. Then you share it with each other. It gets you talking and it gives you things to do that generate new relationship energy. Because basically what's happened is you've got this one pathway of the thing you're on always doing that you Mm -hmm. know you can do to get off but it gets boring and you get tired of your partner and then you don't want to have sex and if all they ever want is intercourse and they've always rushed it and you don't come from intercourse yet because it's a learned skill and I teach people how to do it through through free things I give away um, that is I I just want especially heterosexual monogamous couples to learn how to both have mutually satisfying orgasmic pleasure where he lasts long enough, she has orgasms from intercourse without any intervention. She doesn't have to put a vibrator on her clitoris. She doesn't have to do anything. The penis that's in her vagina is giving her orgasms. And that comes from this matriarchal, patriarchal thing where... He needs to understand that we have as much erectile tissue in our vulva as he does in his penis. But his penis, thanks to that good old hemodynamics, goes bing and he's ready to go. (laughs) He's got to turn around and come back and meet us where we are and get us turned on. And I always say our vulvas, we have three erectile tissue systems in our vulvas, just like men do. They have two corpus spongiosum and a corpus cavernosum, these big long tubes of erectile tissue that fill with blood. And blood flow is ground zero for a good sex life. And as we age, we Mm -hmm. lose nitric oxide production. And there are things that make that worse and even limit it more using mouthwash, not eating leafy green vegetables. There's all kinds of things we do that actually further depress our blood flow. So soon we're not getting full blood flow. We're not getting turned on. The lubrication that we need comes from blood flow, the orgasmic pleasure and the erectile engorgement or expansion of our genital tissue comes from blood flow. So A lot of women are thinking, my libido is shot because my hormones are low. And I say, "Hmm, well, maybe your hormones, but that's really testosterone. It's not estrogen. You might have some vaginal friability because of the estrogen, which can be solved through many different means. Uh, uh, And we can talk, I'd like to talk a little bit about sexual biohacking, this idea that you can reverse your aging genital systems. So you have very robust and healthy young genitalia. So you have the full spectrum of orgasmic pleasure, because I think for many people, their lack of desire comes from genital pain, loss of Mm -hmm. lubrication, loss of orgasmic pleasure, things like that. Super easy to turn around. So let's leave five minutes to talk about that. Um, But when you have female the female vulva, and you have these three erectile tissue systems, the clitoral structure, the urethral structure, and the perineal structure, and they don't get full blood flow, then they don't get big and plump, and then they don't feel the same amount of pleasure, they don't send the same amount of pleasure signals to the brain, and you can't achieve orgasm. And that's what's holding women Mm -hmm. back, is getting rushed for sex and not being Mm. fully engorged. I say that our vulvas are like an English muffin. (laughs) You know how you get an English muffin out of the pack in the fridge if you still eat gluten, which I don't. So basically they have gluten free. Tell you, they do, but I, that's still I know. tough to eat for me. I just try to stay away from anything that looks like white flour, I hear and white sugar. But um, I still drool when I tell this analogy because oh my god, I would love a buttery English muffin. I mean, oh, it's like crack for me. But the but you know how you get the the muffin out and you put it in the toaster. And you push it down, it pops up, it's not quite toasted. You push it down again, it pops up, then it's perfect. You get the butter, it's hard from the fridge. You put it on there, you smash the two sides together, and you have to wait for the butter to melt into the nooks and crannies. That's vulval blood flow. The penis is like, boing, I'm ready to go. And I'm already horny because I have all this testosterone. The female is like, well, I've got a lot less testosterone unless I'm doing exogenous testosterone replacement, which I recommend. And I've got this loss of libido because I have low blood flow and he's pushing me too fast. And so this is what happens is that he doesn't live in our body. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know. So we must educate him. And so I am here to educate your listeners about, hey, there is nothing wrong with you, girlfriend. You are 
totally perfect. Let's do some let's do some regenerative treatments to your vulva that cost almost nothing and make massive improvements so you can feel like you're having 20 year old sex again. And let's teach your male bodied partner how to turn you on by giving you yoni massages. Do you know what a yoni is? Yep. Okay. T- tell your listeners. You tell me. Okay. You're going to do a way uh, yo- better job than me. <laughs> I'll make it really simple. Yoni is the word that I use for vulva or genitals. Um, it's a tantric lovemaking word. It's kind of a spiritual sexuality word for female genitals. And the lingam is the analogous word for his penis. So yoni and lingam. So a yoni massage is basically a vulva massage. Outer labia, mons, inner labia, clitoral structure, urethral structure, vaginal opening, which is called the introidal sphincter, inside the vagina, the perineum, the thighs, the the groin, the belly, the, our little sweet butt cheeks. When we get all that massaged and his his goal, because men do like a goal, is I got to get blood flow. I got to plump yeah. this up. I've got to give her, basically, I tell, I tell them, it's a clitoral erection, even though it's more than that. It's an entire vulval erection or yoni erection. It's all yeah. the parts. Um, then women start having really good sex. Oh, now we're doing new things. Now my vulva's plump. I've done some of these regenerative treatments to my vulva. So I'm having really, I'm getting this nice, young, juicy, beautiful yoni that feels like exquisite velvet. And it's so responsive. And when he puts his penis in, I start having orgasms and it's like, Thank you, Susan Bratton, for telling me that's what I needed. Like, it was blood flow. It was trying new stuff. That's it, guys. Just blood flow. That's it. That's all we need. (laughs) Blood flow. I don't think I've ever heard anyone speak so beautifully about the vagina. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) It's such a seat of our power. And she knows so much. Oh, yeah. That when we connect with her, when we begin to allow our partner to look at us, when we start looking at our vulva. I remember one time I was in, you know, I became, this, I've been doing this for 20 years, but I'm 61. So this is my second career. And I remember being in a tantric workshop in my 40s when I was going through my massive sexual awakening where sex had always been this thing that I thought was supposed to be good, but was never as good as I had thought other people were having. And we went to this tantric lovemaking um, workshop. And the, one of the exercises was hold this mirror up. It Mm. was a pretend mirror. Mm -hmm. Just hold your hand up, pretend it's a mirror and say, here's what I want you to see about yourself. And my husband said, I want you to see that you're not fat, that you're not, that you're beautiful to me, that I, and I wasn't fat. Oh my God. I couldn't, I can't believe what body image issues I had in my thirties. If I could only get that back now. (sighs) Although at 61, I'm looking pretty good because I exercise well. I would never Um, guess that. Thank you. I do what you I can wonderful. do. wonderful. That it's that daily movement that really yeah. has saved me. Um, weight training. I like weight training and and running stairs and things. It, it really Good helps. And, and I started off having long haul COVID with balance uh, was whack. I had muscle loss. I was fat. I lost. Th- you know, I had thirty pounds that I gained, but I had no energy. I could mm. barely walk upstairs. And I hired a trainer, and I'm like, do what you can do. And uh, it's changed my life. So um, that that I think is is really powerful for women to understand yeah. again that our libido is a direct connection to how healthy we, healthy we are, and we can't get there without nutrition and exercise. But um, he held this mirror up and he said, "I wish you could see how beautiful you are to me. I wish you could see how beautiful your vulva is to me." I wish that you would let go of all these body image issues. And I wish you would embrace the beauty of every part of you that I love so much. And it just shifted me in that moment. Like, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. Why, why do I have, why don't I look at my vulva? Why don't I, why do I have self-loathing? Why don't I just not worry about it? Because I always say sex is like, it's a mindset game. It's a, it's a mindfulness Mm -hmm. practice. Our estrogen, is a, it's a worry wart molecule. You, you know oh, yeah. as well as I do. Estrogen is there to protect us because we're prey. 
And men are predators, not our partners necessarily, but there are men out there and we've been preyed upon. And so we need our partners to really create a level of security for us because our crazy estrogen driven monkey minds want to worry about everything. And we have to get out of our minds and into our bodies. And one of the ways to get into our bodies is to celebrate the beauty of our vulva and to see it in all of its manifestations from flaccid and not lubricated to mm -hmm. plump and juicy and wet and full of desire. Mm -hmm. And um, when we start really embracing that and listening to our vulva, mm -hmm. she, a lot of women say to me, I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting, what I'm getting isn't it. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, you do know what you want. <laughs> It's your vulva, your yoni nose, and she's yeah. talking to you the whole time. You just need to tune into KLUV Radio. <laughs> Kayla, that's the station. She's right there repeating it to you all the time. I'd like him to slow down. I'd like him to have more massage. Oh, the where he just put his tongue felt good. Oh, I don't like that at all. That hurts right now. Whatever it is, and being able to communicate that to your partner and and having them love the communication, not think that they did something mm -hmm. wrong, that's a technique I give away called the Sexual Soulmate Pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement. Okay. It's a printout. You can put it, it's, guess what the URL is? Just that. Sexual, sexual Soulmate, soulmate Pact. Pact. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> and it's a really good one for kickstarting communication in the bedroom. Because what women say is, well, if I tell him, if I give him any correction, he's going to contract, he's going to yeah. get butt hurt, he's going to, yep. you know, like be all nye, 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 nye. and I say, okay, well, here's the ninja trick to get your partner to love your feedback and be like, tell me yeah. more. Thank yeah. you, baby. Give it to me. And that's the trick. We, I won't go into it now because you can download yep. it, but that's a really... It's like my number one technique, honestly, even though I teach lots of sex techniques, because if you can't know what you want and ask for it, how can you ever exactly. get it? So it's really yep. the foundation. Well, we're, we're wrapping this up, but I want to hear those biohacking um, okay. tips. So let's kind of end on, on that. So share that. That's super, or I'm very intrigued by this. Okay, good. Well, number one is take a nitric oxide supplement if you're over 40. By the time you're 50, you have half the nitric oxide production that you had when you were 20. Mm -hmm. And if you don't eat a, a ton platefuls of leafy green vegetables and beetroots every day, you're even worse off. Nobody is. So, and stop using antibacterial mouthwash because it's killing the little bacteria that convert the vegetables you do eat into the nitrates that convert to nitric oxide in your system. So I have a sexual vitality supplement company, as you mentioned at the beginning of mm -hmm. the podcast. And I'd be happy to send you some, Erin. Oh, yeah. It's called Flow. And okay. it's Flow Nitric Oxide Booster. And it's made, I looked around at the market and I'm like, where's the organic stuff? Yeah. I don't want pesticides <laughs> from corn Love syrup it. products in my body. I am detoxing, not retoxing. And Flow, I have a URL, buyflownow.com, which I use only for podcasts so that it has my lowest price and really reasonable shipping. It's like my cheapy deal yeah. to try it out. Buy flow now, B-U-Y-F-L-O-W-N-O-W.com. And that's like ground zero. You've got to start with that. That's like pre-hormone replacement. You have to start with nitric oxide. And then of course, bioidentical hormone mm -hmm. replacement. It's, it's very, very good. Your bioestrogens, your progesterone, your testosterone, a little oxytocin boost ain't mm -hmm. going to hurt nobody. Nope. But getting good hugs and body touching also boosts oxytocin if you don't mm -hmm. want to to take it exogenously. And then for women who have atrophy, which is all of us, what I like is a combination of things. The very first thing I like is called Femi Wave. Femi Wave is like Gaines Wave for women. Gaines Wave is an acoustic wave that they run along a man's penis that breaks up the plaque in his arteries so he can get good blood flow and stimulates new tissue growth so that he's as firm as he used to be and he hasn't had any penile volume loss. Hmm. Men need this when they start around 40 years old. They need to start doing annual, semi-annual, every three years, gains wave treatments. Um, or they can use the Phoenix 
it's pro at home. It's not as powerful. It takes more time, but not everyone's near a gains wave practitioner. For women, we now have Femi Wave, mm. which is the female version. They put it on the mons, the outer labia, mm -hmm. and the perineal area. And it sends the acoustic wave in. It helps with urinary incontinence, both stress and urge incontinence. It beefs up the tissue again in the bladder sling, mm -hmm. as well as the pelvic bowl. Mm -hmm. And it reconstitutes the labial tissue and clitoral structure and urethral structure tissues so that you're regrowing new tissue. You're stimulating tissue growth because we become flaccid and we have blood flow loss. Yeah. So Femi Wave is very good. And then for women who have really painful intravaginal sex, I like something called the V-Fit Gold. V-Fit Gold is an, a device that goes inside your vagina that has three modes that work simultaneously and synergistically. It's, um, I have a special gift with offer because I always talk about their product everywhere I go because it is a life changer. It's not a CO2 laser or an RF device that goes up inside the vagina and does all kinds of damage that your body has to fix. It's a kinder, gentler approach that uses photobiomodulation, hmm. which is red light therapy. Yeah. It's red light therapy up the vagina, which stimulates new vaginal mucosal growth. It helps with the glycolic system of your vagina so that you, the glycogen, like if you have an odor you don't care for, but you don't have vac bacterial mm -hmm. vaginosis, you can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. This kind of like writes the biome for hmm. you, if you will. Okay. And it uses warmth for, for recollagenating the vaginal tissue and it uses a tone a vibration for kegel toning so between femi wave and the vfit gold which the url for that if you want to put that in the show notes is joylux.com slash susan okay joylux is the manufacturer woman-owned business life-changing thing eight minutes a day every other day, eight week protocol, 10 week protocol, and you have gotten an entirely new juicy lubricated vagina. I mean, this thing is a game changer for women. Mm. It feels good. It does not hurt. I put it in bed in the morning, have my coffee and scroll my Instagram. And I I love it. And I don't do it all the time. I just do it when I feel like, oh, yeah. I'm spinning again. Mm. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of painfulness. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I just, oh, I'll do another protocol. You own it. So you don't have to go to a doctor right. for it. And I like that. So that's joylux.com slash Susan. And then the last thing is, and we talked about it earlier, PRP, mm -hmm. platelet rich plasma. Um, have you had other guests on talking about the O shot? And I have the P not. Shot? No. Oh, my God. Okay. So. PRP is basically this, it's the healing and growth factors that come from your own blood. They adopt, you go to a, an yep. O shot, you can look up, you can Google O shot directory. Um, you go to a, a person who does O shots and they take a vial of your blood, they put it in a centrifuge, they spin it and they pull off the red and white blood mm -hmm. cells and they're left with something called a fibrin rich matrix. That's the healing factors of your own blood that when you cut yourself, your blood sends oxygen in these factors to fix the boo-boo. And so basically you are atrophying and shrinking and losing tissue mass in your vulva, just like you're wrinkling and everything's getting smaller and you're sh we, sh we shrink as we age. And that creates painful sex. And so the O shot is actually this PRP and it doesn't hurt. They use lidocaine injected into the clitoral structure, which is a sponge and it reconstitutes it and it massively improves your orgasmic intensity. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something. When I was about 55, I started getting O shots. The first one didn't do a lot, but I had faith in the process. So many people had had success with it that I got a second one. And when I got the second one, I'm like, oh, God, I must have been so just desiccated and atrophied that the mm. first one was like barely made a right? dent. And the second one, I'm like, holy cow, now I'm having orgasms that feel like I'm 35, but I'm having the orgasms of a 60 year old because or a 55 at the time, mm -hmm. 55 year old, which are so much better because I've learned how to have so many more orgasms because I've managed to keep my sexuality going and learning right. new things. So those are the things that I love and recommend for women. They don't cost that much. 
It's an investment in your genital health. It mm -hmm. keeps you young and vital. Mm -hmm. It makes sex feel great. And I just really encourage women to keep, you do not have to ever stop having sex. Mm -hmm. Ageless sexuality, great sex till the day you die. It keeps getting better yeah. and better. It fuels you and just fight for it, girlfriend. Oh, that's such a good way to end this. Oh my gosh, we could probably talk about this for so much longer. I'll we're, come back. Oh yes, we're out of time. Um, I'm gonna end with one last question that I ask everyone that's been on my yeah. show. What would be your best or favorite health tip? Oh gosh, I think I already yeah. really gave it to you, honey. I, I said exercise. I mean, I can't make myself go out and do it. And I mm -hmm. think the best investment, I mean, we, we spend so much money on so much crap. <laughs> and I think hiring a trainer to just drag us through our yeah. exercises and get us in shape is the same. No matter how bad off you are, people think about a trainer and they're like, oh God, oh, I'm not ready for a trainer. And it's like, right. you'll never be ready for a trainer. The trainer gets you ready for the trainer. They meet you where you are yeah. and they help you get back on your feet. They get you walking and moving mm -hmm. and balance and flexibility. And it doesn't all have to be fancy, fancy, mm -hmm. hard stuff. So I think working out so and helpful. obviously nutrition. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those are, those are common ones and things I preach they every are. day and, and do for yeah. myself. So You've been wonderful. I love Thanks, what you Sarah. do. I love your passion Good. for it. And I know I learned something from this. So I know everybody out there listen to this. Ladies, Good. have your husbands listen to this podcast too. I think it would be very helpful for men to hear it. And I look forward to checking out all of your fun resources that you have. All of it will be linked in the show notes. And we'll definitely have you back on. So thank you, Susan, for being you. here. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all next week.